Good morning, Pre-K-3. All right, let's get ready for our calendar and circle, and we're gonna start off with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So yesterday was the first day of April, and it was Wednesday. So what comes after Wednesday? It is Thursday. Thursday. April 2nd, 2020 or 2020. Okay. All right, I'm gonna show you guys a little activity on how to count syllables and words another way besides clapping. Because usually in class we have done, this word is grasshopper. We always go grasshopper. And it would be three, but there's another way you can do it. So at home, if you have a marker, a pencil, a crayon, piece of paper, if you can think of words, say the word out loud to yourself and you're gonna tally as you say it. So it's gonna be like this. Move my flag. You're gonna go grasshopper. So how many? Three, so just like we would do when we clapped it. Grasshopper. So the next one, butterfly, butterfly, three. <clears throat> Another word, let's see, caterpillar, caterpillar, four. Here's another one, this is an easy one. Spring, that's just one. Let's go to this one this time. Hibernation, when animals sleep during the winter. Hibernation. Four. And then the last one, insect. Insect. So you can tally the syllables as you say the word. And it's just another way to figure it out instead of clapping, okay? So try that at home and see if you can tally your syllables for different words, okay? And today, we're going to read the story, Chrysanthemum. And if you guys remember, it's about a little mouse and that is her name, and a chrysanthemum is a flower. So we're gonna read this story, Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hinkies. All right. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother, absolutely, said her father, and she was, she was absolutely perfect. Her name must be everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father. And it was Chrysanthemum. Her parents named her Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew. And when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up, and she loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner, and she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written with ink on an envelope, and she loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake. And she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself with her fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect, and then she started school. On her first day, Chrysanthemum wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile. She ran all the way. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum, school. But when Mrs. Chud took roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. It's so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower. 
chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Mrs. Chud that chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria explained. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, Victoria said, as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag, and I'm named after a flower. Oh, pish, said her mother. Your name is beautiful and precious and priceless and fascinating and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, said her mother. Absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner of macaroni and cheese with ketchup and an evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper. She walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria, as Chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, said Rita, pointing. Let's smell her, said Joe. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, a chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with worms and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. I just cannot believe your name, Victoria said, as the students lined up to go home. Neither can I, thought chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower, and they pretended to pick me and smell me. Oh, pish, said her mother. They're just jealous and envious and begrudging and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who wouldn't be jealous of a name like yours, said her mother. After all, it's absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better after her favorite dessert, chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals, and Victoria picked her and plucked the leaves and petals one by one until there was nothing left but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare of Chrysanthemum's life. Chrysanthemum wore her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions and her good luck charms. Chrysanthemum took the longest route possible to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, 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 the flowers seemed to say. That morning, the students were introduced to Mrs. Twinkle, the music teacher. Her voice was like something out of a dream, as was everything else about her. The students were speechless. They thought Mrs. Twinkle was an indes indescribable wonder. They went out of their way to make a nice impression. Mrs. Twinkle led the students in scales. Then she assigned roles for the class musical. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen, and Rita was chosen as the spiffy butterfly princess, and Joe was chosen as the all-important pixie messenger, and Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. Chrysanthemum's daisy, Chrysanthemum's a daisy. Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was wildly funny. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. What's so humorous, asked Mrs. Twinkle. Chrysanthemum was the answer. Her name is so long, said Joe, and it barely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. 
My name is Long, said Mrs. Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on a name tag, said Mrs. Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Mrs. Twinkle, I'm named after a flower, too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Mrs. Twinkle. My name is Delphinium, Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, I'm considering Chrysanthemum as her name. I think it's absolutely perfect. Chrysanthemum could barely believe her ears. She blushed, she beamed, and she bloomed. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. And then it says at the end, overall, the classic musical was a huge success. Chrysanthemum was absolutely perfect as a daisy, and Victoria made the only mistake. She completely forgot her lines as the dainty fairy queen. And Chrysanthemum thought it was wildly funny, and she giggled throughout the entire dance of the flowers. Eventually, Mrs. Twinkle gave birth to a healthy baby girl. And of course, she named her Chrysanthemum. All right. Hope you guys have a great day. It's beautiful outside, so hopefully you guys get outside and play. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.